If we haven't had the opportunity to uh, meet, my name is Randy Brummett, and I serve as the worship pastor right here at Meadowbrook Church. And, uh, well, thank you. I count it an honor to be able to uh, preach the word today in Pastor Tim's absence. Pastor Tim and Alicia are out celebrating their 39th wedding anniversary. Come on. Yeah. So, so good. We miss him. He misses us. He'll be back uh, next Sunday, June 11th. We're going to launch a brand new series called Holy Help, and he's kicking that off. You want to be back in the house? I know uh, summer is vacations and different things, but make church a priority, amen? And uh, you want to be, come on, 12 o'clock, amen? Amen. We want to be back here next week, and uh, it's going to be an awesome, awesome time. I was talking to a few people this past week. I've been in ministry over 15 years, full-time, been around ministry all of my life, grew up in a pastor's home. And I'm just so, so thankful. I've served under many, many leaders, but I'm so thankful for our pastor, his consistency and his leadership. He's a visionary. He's a shepherd. He's the definition, I texted him this a couple weeks ago, of humble authority. And uh, we have an incredible pastor. Can we thank God for Pastor Tim this morning? Come on. Amen. Well, again, I'm so honored to uh, be able to deliver the word today that he would trust me in his absence to do that. I really believe that God has put a word on my heart. And uh, you're not here by accident today. This is the prayer that I've been praying all day. Not that you'd hear a fancy sermon or fancy words, but you would walk out knowing that you've been in God's presence today. And his presence makes all the difference. He's already here, but I just want to ask for his blessing on our time together as we open up the word. Let's pray together. God, we thank you that where your spirit is, there's freedom, there's liberty. Thank you for that power time of worship and opportunities to pray over healing and thank you that you are here but as we open up your word today we know that you instruct you correct you encourage and so help us God to hear from you your word does not return void and so we pray that you would speak in Jesus mighty name and everybody said amen Amen. Well, was a few weeks ago my family and I were at SeaWorld riding a bunch of roller coasters any roller coaster families in the room come on wave at me come on 12 o'clock I'm, I'm kind of in between. My kids, uh, my oldest, Naya and Jonah, they are infatuated and addicted to roller coasters. I'm getting a little older, so my back hurts sometimes, so, you know, it just depends on the day. But a couple weeks ago, we were riding this ride at SeaWorld called Manta. Anybody ever rode that ride? Yeah, they should pay you to ride it, not the opposite. It's, uh, it's another level. But my kids were like, hey, listen, Dad, you've got to ride this ride. And I said, okay. He twisted my arm. Let's do it. So we go on this ride, Manta. It's not your traditional roller coaster if there is something called a traditional roller coaster. But you sit down in the seat. You've got the arm that comes over, the seat belt, and then you are elevated, pretty much hanging like Superman the entire time. It's horrible. You've wrote it. I see you, brother. Yes, you know. (laughs) And uh, so I was excited but nervous, and I started praying a prayer like this. God, you know that I want to get to heaven, but not today. Okay? (laughs) So I'm just asking you, if you would just keep this seatbelt on me, and I'd begin to confess any sins that I did know and didn't know about, <laughs> past, present, and future. And, uh, but it was an awesome time. I got off the ride with the kids, and they're like, wasn't it worth it? It was an incredible time. Wasn't it worth it, Dad? And I said, it's worth it. Let's ride it again. And uh, that's why my back hurts this morning, but, uh, you know, we'll get through it. But it was an awesome time, and I had to realize no matter if it was fearful or not, the ups and downs, it was absolutely worth it. And I want to speak to you just for a few moments on the subject of is it worth it? Is it worth it? The seasons that you're in right now, the things that you're facing, is it worth it? There's an incredible story found in the book of John chapter 11 and John chapter 12. And it goes like this. There was a man named Lazarus. He was very, very sick and he actually died. And he had two sisters, Mary and Martha. They were grieving the loss of their brother for two days at this point. So Martha decided to write a letter and send it over to Jesus. Well, Jesus was in a different village. So the message got to Jesus, but he actually waited two days to respond and head towards Lazarus. So the fourth day, we see that Jesus is heading that way. Martha hears that he's close to the village. She runs out to meet him, and she she makes this statement. Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother would not be dead. What took you so long? Jesus looked, looks at her, let her kind of open up her heart to him in that moment, and he said, hey, Martha, where's your sister Mary? Martha said, hey, Mary's in the house grieving with a bunch of other people. Okay, go get her. I want to talk to her. So Martha, in John chapter 11, runs to the house where Mary's at, 
and says, hey, Mary, Jesus wants to see you now. We see that she immediately ran as fast as she could outside the village to meet Jesus. She falls at his feet and makes the same statement that Martha did a couple moments ago. Said, Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother would be alive. What took you so long? Right there in the midst of her pain, right there in the midst of her grief, Jesus just let her open up her heart. And he looked at her and he said, hey, take me to your brother. Take me to Lazarus. So we see in John chapter 11, Martha and Mary start to head towards the tomb. Jesus is following them. A crowd is starting to gather outside of the tomb where Lazarus is dead. And we see that Jesus shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Now the translation says, Lazarus, wake up. Now the translation says, Lazarus, get up now. He called him out of the tomb. You see, Lazarus came out fully alive but still with grave clothes on. It was a miracle that day. What was once dead is now alive. That's John chapter 11. If you go to John chapter 12, you see that a party is about to happen. All the village is uh, worried about is, is honoring Lazarus. They're excited about it. There's invitations going out. They get to the home. Martha's cooking in the kitchen. Come on. If you've got a gathering, you've got to have some food. Come on, wave at me. Martha's in the kitchen. You've got Lazarus there. You've got Jesus there. You've got Mary there. And the house is getting filled with people. Mary in John chapter 12 is not interested in socializing. She's interested in actually worshiping Jesus in that moment. We see John chapter 12, she asked Jesus, hey, can you just come away from the crowd? If you don't mind, go in the living room. Would you just sit down? I'll be right back. And we see that she went and got a bottle of perfume. It wasn't a cheap bottle. It was worth about a year's of wages. Jesus sat down. Mary kneeled at his feet, broke open this bottle of perfume, and we see that she began to pour it on Jesus' feet, wiping his feet with her hair. It was the only reasonable response in that moment was worship. The fragrance started to fill the room. They're not smell smelling the, the food in the kitchen anymore. They're smelling the perfume, the fragrance. People started to mock it. They gave their own opinions about it. But Jesus paused and said, don't call this waste. What you call waste, I call worship. Leave this woman alone. She's blessing me in this moment. What you call waste, I call worship. And Jesus was blessed in John chapter 12 by Mary's act. You see, in order for us to really grab a hold of this passage of Scripture found in John chapter 11 and John chapter 12, we have to first define this. What is worship? We have to first define what is worship. When we define what worship is, we need to then believe that it's always worth it to worship in every season. But what is worship? The word worship comes from an old English word, worth-ship. And it literally means to give something worth. Another definition says to regard with great or extravagant respect. To give honor or to give devotion to. You see, worship is an active expression of our love towards God. Worship is visible by our life and not only by the words that we speak. True, genuine worship takes place when we give God our whole life, when we give him everything that we have to offer. You're going to see this on the screen. Worship is pulling our affections off of our idols, off of our distractions, and putting them on God. Every distraction that has your attention, it's pulling that away and putting it back on God. When we understand what worship is, we can respond to God in any place. I mentioned a few moments ago, I grew up in a pastor's home all of my life. I like to say it this way, I was born in a hospital, but I lived at church. Pray for me. <laughs> pastor's kid. Sunday, church. Sunday night, church. Tuesday, probably a prayer meeting. Wednesday, we're going to come back to church. Thursday, just to say we did, we might come back again. I'm joking, but serious. And I grew up kind of almost conditioned that the only way that I thought you could connect with the Lord was in the four walls of a church. Now listen, we're glad that you're here. It's been a great day in God's house, but if you're only connecting with God on a Sunday, you're missing it. That's just one expression. We just sang songs. We just sang songs to God, but that is only one expression of worship. I don't have time to go into it today, but we should be living our life on a day-to-day -day basis out of the overflow of what we do during the week. 
Worship takes someone past the place of knowing about God to a place of knowing God. Let's say that again. Worship takes someone past the place of knowing about God to a place of knowing God. We need to be in the Word, but the Word needs to get in us. You can quote scriptures all day long and not know the God of the scripture. And God wants you to get in the Word, but something that the Lord's been walking me through, there's a personal connection that he's got. And so I'm glad that you're here, but it's not a religious duty. It's a relational connection that gets us to that place. Amen? Amen. Just learning a truth about God is education, and we need that, but we need to go beyond information and step into a place of revelation. We need to go beyond information and step into a place of revelation. What does that mean? Let's go back to the text in John chapter 11. That Jesus is looking at Mary, falling at his feet. The miracle didn't happen yet. Now she sees her brother get raised back to life. That's John 11. Now in John chapter 12, we see this interaction where people have heard that Jesus could perform miracles, but Mary saw it with her own eyes. People in the room didn't understand it because they heard, I think that he might have raised this man back to life. I'm seeing him in the house I think he did. Jesus said, oh, no. Or sorry, Mary said, no, no, no. I saw Jesus do it with my own eyes. And whatever you see causes you to respond to it. The more that you see what Jesus can do, it causes you to respond with a lifestyle of worship. And we see this happening in John chapter 12 where Mary couldn't help but respond to him because she went beyond information of what Jesus could do to revelation of what she saw him do. Practically speaking for us today, worship must go beyond a weekly service. Our worship must be lived out before it ever starts to mean anything. So this morning, this afternoon, I want us to pull out a couple different things from our text, John 11 and John 12, and this is my goal for this morning, to help us understand how can worship be lived out in every season of your life. Is it really worth it? The seasons that you're walking through, the seasons that I'm in right now as well, is it worth it to trust God? Number one, and you'll see this on the screen, the delay was not a denial. The delay was not a denial. Let's go back to our text in John chapter 11, verses 5 through 6. It says, so although Jesus loved Martha, he loved Mary, and he loved Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Verse 7, finally he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. Can you imagine, just put yourself in the story and imagine what Mary and Martha are feeling in that moment. Our brother's dead. We're sending you a message and now you're going to wait two more days to even show up. It doesn't make sense. But the delay was not a denial. Jesus knew exactly what they needed. You see, there was deep pain within these two sisters, everyone connected to Lazarus. Jesus even called Lazarus a good friend. He loved him dearly. He was hurting too. There was deep pain connected, but both still trusted, even in the midst of grief. There's a few things that are important to see here in our text. God doesn't ask you and I to not have emotions. He's not thrown off by your questions. The seasons that you're in right now He knows exactly what you're walking through. And we see this happening in John chapter 11. Go with me. So Martha made a statement. Hey, Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Mary said the same thing. She actually kneeled before him in grief and in pain. Jesus didn't interrupt her. He let her talk in that moment, showing that right in the midst of your pain, Mary, I'm here. You see, he wants us to bring all of the things that we're struggling with to him so he can help us process the right way. You know, oftentimes the reason why we go to isolation or we go to other people is because we don't realize that Jesus can fulfill the need that we have. And I want to encourage you today, some of you in this room, you're going through some things, and I don't want to diminish that, but I want to encourage you today to know that the Lord is for you and he's not against you. And you can process that pain with Jesus. He created you. Word of God says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. He wants you to walk with him with your pain, to approach him with the grief, with the frustrations, with the concerns. Worship reminds us to trust God even when we can't trace the next step. 
to trust God even when we can't trace the next step. Another item that we see in John chapter 11 is that Jesus waited for Mary and Martha before going to resurrect Lazarus. I love this. Let's look at John chapter 11, verse 30. It's going to be on the screen. Jesus had stayed outside the village at the place where Martha met him. Jesus was waiting on Mary and Martha before going to Lazarus. Think about this. Jesus, full of all power, 100% man and 100% God. In that moment, he didn't have to wait to get in front of Lazarus. He could have spoken from the outside village just a whisper. Lazarus, get up. And immediately, Lazarus would have walked out of that tomb. He could have walked directly to his tomb and shouted with nobody around. But why did he wait for Mary and Martha? He wanted to show them that it wasn't about him showing off his power. Look what I can do. No, I am with you right in the midst of pain. This was more than Jesus just showing off. It's a reminder that Jesus really, really cares. Hear me this afternoon. He really, really cares about your pain. He really, really cares about the things that you and I are walking through, and he will wait with us right in the midst of that season. Some of you today, you haven't been processing with the Lord. You've been processing in your own intellect. You've been kind of walking through the season by yourself, isolated. Hear the word of the Lord today. He loves you. He's for you. He's not against you. And so the things that we're walking through, we need to be okay to process it with him. It was a reminder in John chapter 11 that Jesus really, really cares about our pain. John chapter 11, verse 35, you even see that Jesus responded by weeping with them. I mentioned earlier that Lazarus and Jesus were friends, but can you imagine Jesus seeing his two sisters broken in grief and in pain? Jesus wept with them as a reminder that he wanted to walk with them through it all. I was praying this week, and I just felt this in my heart. Some of you are walking through some things, as I mentioned a couple moments ago. You've been asking questions like, God, where are you? Where's the breakthrough? Where's the miracle? How long am I going to be in this season? How long am I going to deal with these things? And I want to encourage your heart with the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 in the NIV. And it says, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, let's read it again. Never will I leave you, and never will I forsake you. Our pastor, Pastor Tim, says this often. You are never alone, and you are never, come on, say it again. You are never alone, and you're never without help. You're not alone, church. You're not alone. You can be in a big crowd and feel alone. But I want to speak to your heart today. The Lord knows exactly where you're at. He knew that you were going to be here today, Sunday, June 4th, first Sunday of this month, and he knows exactly what you're walking through, and he loves you unconditionally. Look at the screen today. I want us to declare this just as a personal statement and personalize it together. Can we read it on the screen, church? I am never alone, and I am never without help. Come on, say it again. I am never alone, and I am never without help. One more time. I am never alone, and I am never without help. Believe that, church. So the delays that we see in our life, not having the answers, the hard seasons that you find yourself in right now, the very thing that comes to mind right now that you're walking through, you are not alone. It is not God's denial. You might feel like that he's late. You might feel like, God, when are you going to show up? When are you going to help me deal with this financial difficulty or whatever you're looking at in the natural? Hear God today. It's not a denial. It might feel like a delay, but he is on time. You and I just have to trust the process because he is with us every single step. If you believe it, say amen. amen. So the delay was not a denial. Number two, if you're taking notes, Mary and Martha, they worshiped while they waited. They worshiped while they wait. Sometimes we wait and we're frustrated, right? Am I the only one? But we see Mary and Martha, while they were waiting on Jesus to resurrect Lazarus, they still had a posture of worship. John chapter 11, verse 32, you'll see it on the screen. Mary arrived and saw Jesus, and she fell at his feet. She said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother 
would not have died. She chose worship, listen to me today, even in the midst of pain. Bowing before Jesus was a sign of trusting even in the midst of her grief. You see, Mary took her pain and still postured her heart in surrender. The tendency, if we're not careful, is to only worship when things are going good. Come on, am I the only one in the room? But Jesus deserves our worship even in the midst of uncertainty, even in the midst of confusion, even in the midst of your fears, even in the midst of those financial difficulties that you're facing, even in the midst of the things that come to your mind right now in the season that you're in. He deserves your worship. And Mary bowing before Jesus in John chapter 11 was an outward expression of what her heart really, really needed. Mary needed comfort above anything else. Comfort that could only come from being close to Jesus in that moment. I've been convicted lately just in my own life of wh who's the first person that I run to. Matthew 6.33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And I think it's, it's habits that we can get in of either picking up the phone and calling a friend, and you need community, hear me. But what I feel like the Lord's been walking me through is, son, when you're going through something, I want you to come to me. Because if you get in my presence, there's fullness of joy. There's peace that surpasses all understanding. There's joy and strength and hope to know that I'm with you. Amen? So Mary bowing before Jesus was an outward expression of what her heart really needed. She needed comfort. She needed to know, listen, Jesus didn't even have to say anything. It was his presence in that moment that brought her comfort. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 17 through 18 it's just a declaration to trust God in any season. It says, even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there are no grapes on the vines, even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty, verse 18, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Can we say that together? Yet... I will rejoice in the Lord. One more time, church. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. You see, Mary had a yet praise. She didn't understand it. Think about it in that moment. She didn't know that her brother was going to get resurrected from the dead. But she had a yet praise to believe there is nothing that Jesus can't do. And I'm going to let it rise in my heart to believe even... Though this situation seems impossible, it doesn't make sense. I don't know why he would wait two days. I know the one that can resurrect him is in front of me. And so I'm going to have a yet praise rise up. Even in the waiting, Mary chose worship. I wonder right where you're at today. What are the things that you're walking through that maybe you can let a yet praise rise up? That even if he doesn't do it, I'll worship. But I know in the midst of my pain that his presence is everything that I need, and so I'm going to trust him. I'm going to lean not on my own understanding, but I'm going to acknowledge him every step of the way because I know that he can still do it. We've got to choose to have a yet praise. Before the miracle, before the breakthrough, to choose to worship Jesus in every season. Are you with me, church? Amen. Psalms 34, 1 through 9, says, I bless God every chance I get. My lungs expand with his praise. I live and breathe, God. If things aren't going well, hear this and be happy. Join me in spreading the news. Together, let's get the word out. Verse 4, God met me more than halfway, and he freed me from my anxious fears. Look at him. Give him your warmest smile. Never hide your feelings from him. See, when I was desperate, I called out, and God got me out of a tight spot. God's angel sets up a circle of protection around us while we pray. Verse 8, I love this. Open up your mouth and taste. Open up your eyes and see how good God is. For blessed are you who run to him. Worship God if you want the best. For worship opens doors to all of his goodness. Do you believe that, church? Come on. That's worshiping while you wait. That's saying, I don't have the answer yet, but I know who's got it, and it's Jesus. You see, it's so easy to just worship when we need an answer, but here's a question for you today. Sometimes if we're not careful, once we get through the tight spot, we'll forget to go to him. 
What happens when you get the breakthrough? We prayed for healing today. What happens when he heals your body? We see in John chapter 12 that even though Mary saw Lazarus get raised from the dead before she was struggling with the fact of can he do it, but in John chapter 12, even though she got the answer, she still worshiped. We can forget to keep going to Jesus with a posture of worship once he does what he said he would do. We see the same response from Mary, but this time from a place of thankfulness and gratitude in John 12. John 11, struggling. I don't have the answer. John 12, I've got the answer, but I'm still going to trust. Let's go back to John chapter 12, verse 3. Then Mary took a 12-ounce jar of expensive perfume made from the essence of nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance. The same response, but two different situations. You see, John chapter 11, Mary surrendered in a place of pain. But John chapter 12 Mary surrendered in a place of praise. I'm going to say that again. John chapter 11, I don't have the answer. I don't know if he's going to do it. Surrendered in a place of pain. John 12, I saw him do it, but now I'm still surrendered, but this time in a place of praise. Because of her choice to worship, even after the answer came, something in the atmosphere changed in John chapter 12. And people, even though they didn't understand it, they were changed by it. Let's go back to our last scripture, John chapter 12, verse 3. The house was filled with the fragrance. The house was filled with the fragrance. You see, people were blessed by Mary's worship. The atmosphere around her changed because of her willingness to offer, listen to me, pure worship to Jesus. Didn't make sense to other people, but it made sense to Mary. There are people around you, church, in your job, your family, your friends, and they're watching how you and I handle the things that come our way. And our willingness to worship through the pain and also from a place of praise will help others experience the goodness of God. I'm going to say that again. Your willingness to push through the pain, even when it doesn't make sense. We just came out of an incredible series with Pastor Tim on peace. What is peace? Peace is, it doesn't make sense. I don't know why, but it's in my soul. And so worshiping through pain, people are watching how you handle those things. And from a place of praise, what do you do when the answer comes? Do you still have that same tenacity to worship Jesus even though you've got the answer? I want to encourage you today as we end that delays, the delays that you see in your life right now, they're not a denial. They're not a denial. God doesn't play games with us. You don't go through things and he gets blessed by it. The things that you're walking through right now, he just wants you to be reminded that, listen, you are not alone. We read about it in Hebrews chapter 13. Never will the Lord forsake you. He won't leave you. And so we have to remind our soul that the delays that we see are not a denial. And also, while I'm waiting, I don't have the answer. I don't know how I'm going to get through it. I can't see the end, but I know that you do. And though because you do, God, I'm going to worship while I wait. And I'm going to trust you in every season because I realize this. Worship is always worth it. Come on, if you believe it, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on.